I find myself talking about a lot of movies on this channel that seem to be remembered fondly, yet they've somehow narrowly escaped cult classic status. Don't get me wrong, these films definitely have a strong following, but they aren't necessarily getting midnight screenings or merchandise licensed in their honor. I want to take some time to spotlight some of these films that I feel are stuck between being pleasant childhood memories and bona fide cult classics. These are almost cult classics. And I can't think of a better place to start than Clifford. It was the early 90s, and with the success of films like Problem Child and Home Alone, every studio in Hollywood was looking to greenlight similar movies about meddlesome kids wreaking havoc on the lives of authority figures, bad guys, and adoptive parents. Movies like Blank Check, Dennis the Menace, and Baby's Day Out would all closely follow the formula perfected by other mega-hit family films. But there was one movie that dared to be different. A movie that would take the premise of a troublesome, menacing youth and flip it on its head. A movie that was so different, so bizarre, and so out there that upon its completion, it was hidden away for four years before crawling to the light of a limited release in 1994, failing commercially and baffling audiences and critics alike. It's a movie so perfectly strange in its own unique way that I actually find it to be an amazing film. A movie called Clifford. I know I'm not alone in this opinion, but I want to dive into just what makes this film so special and worth rewatching time and time again. And if you haven't seen it, I'll try not to spoil too much. If anything, I want you to come away from this video wanting to go watch it. On script, Clifford really isn't that different than your standard menacing 10-year-old versus authority figure comedy. The reason this movie is so unique, however, is the 10-year-old boy is played by Martin Short. That's right, Martin Short who was 40 at the time this film was made, plays 10-year-old Clifford. And though there's no catch, Martin Short plays an actual 10-year-old boy. And the weird part is, he's strangely good at it. Clifford, who is traveling with his parents on a flight to Honolulu, causes the plane to have to make an emergency landing in Los Angeles, so he has a shot at visiting a dinosaur-centric theme park called Dinosaur World. Clifford is obsessed with dinosaurs, so much so that he carries a toy dinosaur named Stefan everywhere with him, and he even communicates with it. Stefan felt that was a very cruel action, Uncle Martin. Oh, will you tell Stefan? When he's not allowed back on the airplane, Clifford's parents are forced to call on a favor from Clifford's Uncle Martin, who just so happens to live in Los Angeles. Enter Charles Grodin. This man does not get nearly enough praise as he deserves, but he's just a national treasure, especially in this movie. Martin Short's performance as a 10-year-old is so believable mainly because of Charles Grodin and the complete sincerity he exhibits when acting in scenes with a 40-year-old man who is supposed to be convincingly playing a child. Clifford? Don't reject me! Uncle Martin? Yes. He adds a total validity to the whole gimmick of this movie. Grodin's Uncle Martin character happens to be looking for a way to prove to his girlfriend, Sarah, played by Mary Steenburgen, that he's ready to be a father and leaps at the opportunity to watch his nephew for a few days. I'm Larry the Scary Rex. I'm a scary dinosaur. But don't be scared of my sharp, sharp teeth and my mighty, mighty roar. <laughs> oh boy, you are some sort of hero. But Clifford ends up falling in love with his uncle's girlfriend in an incredibly creepy fashion. Oh, Clifford, this is, this is Sarah Davis. Hello. Hello, Miss Sarah Davis. Whew, that's a lovely bathrobe you're wearing. I'm sure anyone else who wouldn't look half as lovely. A toupee wearing Dabney Coleman is also in love with her, as if this movie didn't have enough going on, and I guess I should also mention that the movie is bookended with segments of a now elderly Clifford in the year 2050 who's a Catholic priest and telling his story to an orphan played by Ben Savage. Well, that's true, I've changed. But when I was your age... Uh, I... I did start by saying this movie was strange. The real conflict of the movie 
comes when Uncle Martin reneges on his promise to take Clifford to Dinosaur World because of his demanding job, and Clifford then seeks revenge. Next. Aren't you going to say something nice about Sarah's mother? The rest of the movie follows Clifford making life hell for Uncle Martin as the two clash in hilarious fashion while trying not to raise suspicion from Sarah. See, when when you are looking at the baseball, look at it! Oh, hit it! Hit it! Keep your eye on it! Keep your eye on the ball! <laughs> oh, honey, be careful while you eat your cereal. Use a napkin. This boy and his cereal! <laughs> The movie was filmed in 1990, but didn't end up getting released until 1994 due to the bleak financial situation of Orion Pictures, the film's production company. Upon its release in 1994, it was critically panned and flopped financially. I'm going to talk to you now about one of the worst movies I've ever seen. In fact, a movie that is so bad it's almost inexplicable because it's bad in strange ways. You sit there looking at the screen and saying, what is going on here? What did they think? And from a marketing perspective, its title really doesn't help, as I know a lot of people confuse this movie with The Big Red Dog. I discovered this movie on cable when I was growing up, and I've just developed such a fondness for it. My, that's the bestest looking wig I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's, that's, that's not a wig. <laughs> you said it was a wig? No, no, no. You, you called it a rug, too. No, 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 you misunderstood me, son. I never said you were a wig, sir. Good, good. Please don't ever tell someone that they have a nice wig. I said it was the bestest looking wig I ever saw. It was a compliment. <sighs> if any other two actors had been cast in the leads, my feelings would probably be different. But Martin Short and Charles Grodin just make this film worth watching. They commit all the way to make the relationship feel real between their characters, and they're just so naturally funny in their scenes together. If you do one thing that I find weird, which is, you know, like your middle name, See, you're doing it right now. Can you just act like a human boy for one minute here? Look at me like a person. You can't do it for more than a few seconds. Look at me like a human boy. Don't mess around with me. This movie is worth revisiting or visiting for the first time thanks to their performances alone. At the time of this video's release, it's streaming on HBO and available for rent on the rest. Also, the song playing right now is the movie's actual score. I'm not even making this up. Just go give Clifford a watch. You won't regret it.